Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Kate Zynard. I'm Meg Healy. And I'm Amanda Carestio. Today on the podcast, we welcome Kimberly Payne of Straight Stitch Designs. Yay! Yay, <laughs> welcome! <laughs> Kimberly is a pattern designer, teacher, retreat organizer, and everything in between. And I have to say that I'm glad that we have finally, finally, finally got you on the Mm -hmm. podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I know, Amanda, we have talked about me being on the podcast forever. Forever. (laughs) And we (laughs) just never (laughs) actually made it happen. So I'm excited to finally be here and get a chance to chat all things sewing with you guys. Yay. This is going to be fun. Um, We have a great conversation planned, um, and then we'll kind of drop into our standard segments, talk about our sojo, answer a listener question, and all of that. Uh, But before we dive in to business topics, how is everybody doing? Kate has something exciting to share. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing great. In case you didn't see it on Instagram, I got my dream mermaid unicorn hair. Um, it is it's a combination so cute. of pink and purple with a little bit of teal in it. Um, you can go and see it on Instagram at, at Kate Zynard if you haven't already seen it. I love it. It makes me very, very happy. And um, yeah, I'm blissfully happy with my cotton candy princess unicorn. <sighs> Mermaid hair. Have you made Have you made any outfits for it yet? Because uh, yes. I feel like that that kind of change requires outfits. Totally. Um, you know, I haven't like gone all the way out and made an outfit, but I got it done two days before uh, my birthday party, and I uh, did make myself a, a shirt that coordinates quite nicely to wear to my birthday yes. party. So, so yes, yeah, sort of terrific. Also, happy birthday. Thank you. Exactly. (laughs) Man, the years. I know. Yeah, I snuck that one through. Now I'm... (laughs) Yeah, I want lime green hair now. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, green oh. fades badly is what my uh, is what I was told. But I don't know, lime green. Is that why you only got a little bit of teal? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> it really is because the teal is going to fade out fastest, and it's probably going to hit a weird green in the meantime. But that's okay. I don't mind a little weird green. Yeah, my hair is feeling really boring right now. I, I might have to change things up. I'm, I'm inspired, Kate. Oh, awesome. Well, you know, you do enough skating that it seems completely reasonable that you should do something fun. I'm, yeah, I'm a, I I'm a fan of everybody hair. doing fun things with their hair. Yes. I have a funny little story. Julian last night, so every night he listens to podcasts and play this game on his phone to unwind. And he probably went through all his list and he's like, I'm listening to So and Tell. I'm like, what? Really? He, he binge listened to three episodes and he, he takes off his headphones and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm just listening to Amanda brought her little machine on her honeymoon. I was like, isn't that so cute? <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, he was like actually listening. I'm like, you don't have to listen. He's like, no, it's I actually liked listening. And it was so funny. He was just like, binge listening to the podcast last night that it was is, so funny so hi awesome. julian if you're listening again <laughs> hi julian hi julian um, it was it was very cute yeah yeah as part of the podcast process you know we, we have to listen we give a listen afterwards make sure everything's yeah. lines yeah. up and it sounds good and everything but i was doing that one time and i had it on the speaker in my kitchen and I usually listen to it back at like 1.75 speed. So it's like, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Um, But I had it just on normal speed. Thank goodness. But my daughter and my husband were listening because I was just doing the dishes, trying to get through the, the mm-hmm. edit and getting yeah. it a good listen. And I eventually I turned it off. I finished doing the dishes and I was going to move somewhere else and listen to it. And they were like, why did you turn it off? And I was like, you guys were listening? listening and they were like, yeah, <laughs> we want to hear what happened. Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Cause you know, they're like definitely not sewers. Yeah. So yeah. He came into my studio last night and I was like, what episode are you on now? He goes, I heard you talking about all the Christmas decorations you were going to sew, but you didn't. And 
oh no, this is gonna backfire. I know. I'm like, now I need to watch what I say and I make. And then he was like, you were talking about like tiny, tiny jackets for snowmen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's nice like reliving all those memories and so it was so cute yeah <laughs> oh. yeah i think mark has fallen down on listening he used to listen but uh I, mm-hmm. my mom too like i don't know maybe my cousin's still listening um if you are hi guys mm-hmm. but um i know kimberly <laughs> you said you used to have a podcast did your friend yep. did your family ever listen to your podcast you know I don't think anyone actually listened to it in my family. <laughs> my mom, my mom possibly did. Um, but I think like my husband and I both work from home. So yeah. as I'm recording these podcasts, oh, right. he He's and then it. I would edit it myself. So he would hear the same thing over and over and over. So he, I don't think he ever actually listened to the podcast, um, which I don't blame him. Like it, it's not really his yeah. interests um but i'm i'm sure my mom listened to it because isn't that what moms do they mm-hmm. even if they don't yeah. if they're not really interested they're like oh well my daughter has a podcast i guess i listen to podcasts now mm-hmm. so yeah i mean but my podcast was like all kinds of different makers so you oh, know it was nice. it was yeah. interesting it was like you know, talking to people that sculpt with Fimo clay and I yeah. talk to just all kinds of different people. And so for me, it was, it was more interesting too, because it was learning about stuff that I've never done that I probably mm-hmm. won't ever do. So yeah, nobody really listened to it though in my family. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, mm-hmm. shall we go ahead and hop in to our our main segment here. I'm excited to get started. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just shout out to all the hubbies who listen then. <laughs> just a little shout out. <laughs> and the moms. I'll get, my hus- to the moms. I'll get my husband to listen to this one. Okay, good. <laughs> because it's new. It's different. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, you're editing this. So no, I'm just yeah, joking. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, oh. so yeah, we all know sewing can be fun, but it can also be a business. So we are talking to the one woman show for straight cis designs. We dive into the pros and cons of starting a sewing business tips and how to get started and just fun things surrounding sewing and businesses and, and all that. So Kimberly, why don't you go ahead and just tell us like a little bit about everything that you do? Well, I am, like you said, a yeah. one woman show. <laughs> I <laughs> handle absolutely everything, you know, within my business and some things I'm good at and some things I am so not good at, but I just kind of like muddle my way through it and, you know, reach out to friends to get help. Um, but you know, the biggest part of my business is a uh, pattern design. So whether mm-hmm. it's, uh-huh. it's designed patterns for my own collection, designing patterns for you guys, for yeah. your readers. Um, and even within the sewing community, there's a few uh, people that I've worked with who are, you know, bloggers who want to create a pattern, but they just don't have the knowledge yep. um, or the skill to be able to do that. Although I will say they could, but the amount of like learning and research that would go into it yeah, for a lot of people, they just don't have that upfront time. So Mm -hmm. I sort of offer that as a service as well as creating patterns for other people. A lot of times that's called like a white label Mm -hmm. service where like I'm the ghost writer of the pattern. Like I'm not (laughs) mentioned anywhere. I'm just the one that did it and got paid for the service. And then they release it as a pattern of their own. Um, So that's a lot of what I do. Um, But I also teach. And I Mm -hmm. think that um, I didn't realize how much I would love teaching until Mm -hmm. uh, the very first time I went to Craftcation, which is this amazing conference in California that's uh, held every spring. And I just went and taught my t-shirt pattern 
And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is like a room full of women that have no expectations other than Aww. having fun and learning a new skill. And it was like just hanging out with friends for like three hours. And so I kind of discovered through that that I loved teaching. So that's one thing that I've been trying to do more of. Well, pre-COVID, I tried to do more of yep. it. And I'm hoping as everything starts to return to a new normal that I will be able to get out and do even more teaching after that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many aspects that you can do, like a sewing business too. Yeah, all of those things. And I think the what's most intimidating to me is like the grading, which is like, mm -hmm. um, which is su such a big part of what you do and so much expertise and knowledge and everything like that. So that's such a great service, like <laughs> just in terms yeah. of grading. Yeah, I think grading is probably one of the things that is the yeah. most intimidating for totally. people. Totally, yeah. And there's so many ways you can do it. Like there are, there's so many different ways that designers go about it. And that's what I find interesting chatting with other pattern designers. Is yeah. I'm like, Ooh, how do you do your grading? And then it's like, we're all comparing notes and we all do it a little bit differently. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that there is like, uh, you know, an industry standard for like fashion, you know, like yeah. for, for clothing yeah. lines, there's yeah. a certain way it's done. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's great about the indie pattern market is that we can all kind of figure out our own ways to do things without sort of feeling like everything has to be done one way. And so I have found what works for me and I have my workflow and I don't really have to focus on what everybody else is doing. But yeah. there's seven years worth of learning and doing yeah. that has gone into that. So there is an element of, I know what I'm doing. So at some point it's easier to pay somebody who knows what they're doing yeah. than to spend seven years trying to master a skill if you just don't have the time. Totally. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting because I feel like on this end, it seems like grading is a science, but it's really an art. It seems like it's much more subjective. Yep. There are different approaches. And I actually kind of like that perspective because I like that there are like, there's a human behind this making decisions. It's not just plug it in and, you know, lay it down. It's, um, but I hadn't, I don't think I'd really thought about that before. So that's very cool. Yeah. I mean, it's little things that I don't think people realize. Like if yeah. I'm taking a pattern and I want to extend it to say a seven X, like when we extended your size range yes, yeah, and there's little elements that you don't think about, like your shoulders don't get exponentially longer yeah. just yep. because your size right. is larger. Mm -hmm. So, and the, you know, the curve of the arm size, you've got to really think about what it means as you're getting larger. You don't grow, you know, 12 inches just because your size is larger. So there's lots of, like you said, it's sort of like subjective. I have to mm -hmm. take the math aspect of it, but then I also have to take like real world people yeah. and work those two things together. And yeah. it's just stuff that you learn, you know, yeah. like, like if, I look back at some of my early patterns and I just cringe, <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is why I removed quite a few patterns. My first yeah. probably four yeah. patterns because everything I've learned, I looked back and thought, oh my gosh, did I really do that? And I, yeah. I did the best I could in that time. Yeah. And then sure. when I learned better, either I've updated it or I've decided we're just going to retire those patterns. So, <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it's just something that you kind of have to have a feel for. You can't just jump uh -huh. in and do it and expect to have good results in the beginning. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's why you have the grading business. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And we're so grateful for that. Yes, we um, are. We were thinking about this, this podcast episode, and I swear, just like right around the time we were thinking through the business angle, I think I saw a meme 
And it's like one of those uh, wiki hows. And it's like how to kill your passion for your hobby. And it's like, one, yep. start a business. Yep. And I wondered, I mean, we've talked to that, about that on the podcast quite a bit. Like, you know, we we all do this for a living in some semblance or another. But we also, like, I definitely still have time and passion to sew garments. It it kind of crests and wanes and um, goes through different, you know, periods of intensity. But I still, I still consider it a hobby. Um, Mm -hmm. Where do you fall on that spectrum, Kimberly? You know, unfortunately, sewing is no longer a hobby for me. Yeah. Um, And it doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. I just can't ever sit and sew and just think of it as sitting and sewing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's funny because when I was like in my late teens, my mom said to me, you know, think of something that you love to do and then go find a way to get paid for it. And so I've sort of thought of that a lot over the years. Like I love sewing, I love making, I love doing these things. And I found a way to get paid for it, which is sort of, you know, a dream. But I had to give it up as a hobby because I can't, like, as soon as it became a business, I am constantly thinking in my head while I'm doing these things, okay, I could post about this on Instagram or, Mm -hmm. you know, like, how about I take a picture while I'm doing this so that I can share this technique I did or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, it, that's just how it is now, but I do still feel, you know, find joy in actually sewing, but unfortunately it just doesn't get to be my hobby anymore. Um, but I like to consider myself a hobby picker upper. So I have no, got some other ones. (laughs) I have no shortage of hobbies. So... (laughs) <gasps> yeah. What are some of your I know I want to know what your just yeah. quickly, what are some of your other hobbies that you picked up? Well, it's funny because basically my makers retreat came out of these are all the hobbies I want to do. I just don't have time to do them all. And so now I learn how to do them and then we do them at the makers retreat. But Fun. getting back to the original question, I really like macrame and Ooh. fabric dyeing. So that's one element of sewing that is still a hobby, which is if I get to dye my fabric. And I did some screen printing and I made, you know, uh, polymer clay jewelry. So it's like all these super creative things that are making, but not exactly sewing. I feel like there there are moments that I go through where it's like, like doing sewing, like work all day. And then I'm like sewing at night. And there are a few of those these days, but it kind of became so insular or insular, yeah. whatever, however you say it. Like, it's just like, that was kind of like all I knew. And I love being immersed that deeply in something, but I feel like um, kind of giving myself time to do other things has made me think about sewing in new and different ways. And, um, and I really value that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I took up cross stitch a couple of years ago and then I started going, oh, well, could I cross stitch on mm-hmm. clothes? And then I thought, well, if I'm doing cross stitch, I might as well learn embroidery <laughs> so that I could embroider, you know? Slippery slope. So it is, it is. And I just like don't have time for all of these hobbies, but it is fun to see how these hobbies can be integrated into my business and my, I still love sewing, even if it's a business now. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I just had a quick thought that popped into my head when you said fabric dyeing. I was like, Kate should so dye a piece of fabric, like to just perfectly match her hair. <laughs> I, I, I would love to. I totally would. But I don't think it would work because my hair changes color every time I wash it. It's a slightly different oh, color. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, so could your fabric. No. <laughs> you know? I feel like you could ice dye it. I, and then, that was, you know, that was my first oh, thought was ice yeah. dye. You could totally ice three dye. Tones. Yeah. It would be fun. 
Mm-hmm. What? No, I've got. I just had this like vision. <laughs> vision it's a for vision. you, Kate. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, keep sharing the visions. I'm enjoying them. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm just like so. I'm just. I guess I'm just so envious of your. I, I just want to do something crazy with my hair too. So I'm just living vicariously through you. And oh, okay. I want to do something. I want to do something crazy with business too. Like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still thinking of like other things that I, other things that I can do, but I want yeah. to ask you, Kimberly, um, what are your favorite types of patterns to design? We always like to categorize favorites on the pod. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. My, my business has shifted a ton. When I first started, it was like, I would see a, a design idea and think, oh my gosh, I should make that a, mm-hmm. into a pattern. And so it was really like, all over the place because it was things that I thought were cool looking and I would make a pattern. And I've come to realize that the patterns I enjoy creating the most are like basics Mm -hmm. because that is what I wear. Like as much as I would like to wear all of these like really cool patterns, the reality is is that I wear some combination of jeans and a t-shirt and (laughs) some sort of sweatshirt or sweater every day. Occasionally I'll throw on like a different top, but I think I like creating the patterns that I know others will probably also just grab for in their closet on a daily basis. And so it just, I think it's because I know that I'm going to get the most wear out of these patterns. And so I really just enjoy taking a basic piece and maybe adding a fun detail that yeah. is, you know, makes it a little bit different, but then also, you know, it's a basic piece that's going to get worn all the time. Mm-hmm. Is your top um, one of your patterns that you're wearing, the plaid? It is. It's what my it, which one meadow is it? wood oh, top. Yeah. I love that <laughs> pattern. Is, you know, I have probably six in my closet that I just kind of like rotate between when I want to wear something other than t-shirts and sweatshirts. <laughs> um, but it's so easy to wear that like, it's just as easy as a t-shirt. So yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite patterns I've created. I think. I love it so much. I th- I made two, I think in the fall and actually I wore one under a cardigan to a concert two nights ago. And I thought of you, Kimberly, which oh. is kind of a fun little thing, like just to think about. Oh, it's like you were person- there. Exactly. <laughs> you were there right beside me at the concert. Which um, is actually the perfect way to go to a concert because I actually don't like concerts, but I love that I got to be there with you at yes, the concert. You were there. <laughs> you were there in spirit. Um, and I think that that dovetails into like kind of how we've been working together, which has been so awesome. And it is completely self-serving on my end because I'll think, hmm, we, we, what is our next like sew along pattern? Well, I really need this in my wardrobe. Know, Let's make eh? that the yeah. pattern. Or like, <laughs> Meg, we should have Kimberly do this or that. And ooh, yeah, you know, it's oh, yeah. really, and it's you know what so, I'm saying this. yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, but it has been so amazing to work with you in that way because I feel like we hand you these assignments and you run with them and you always bring your perspective to the table with those as well. And like some of those, uh, some of those patterns have been, I mean, have been a challenge, uh, thinking about the Wyndham bomber jacket and that, that so along, like that was probably one of all, I know that was one of the harder so alongs we had done, but I love that jacket so much. And it's just, I don't know. I just think about the the course of our, our work together. And we've really, I feel like made some awesome things. I agree. And I love working with you guys. And I, I say this in emails all the time, but like, just keep the projects coming because (laughs) it's so fun to like, take your vision. The three of you have this idea Mm -hmm. for what you want. And then I get to say, well, one, is this possible or not? Right. How how can I make this work? And then I also get to kind of add little details that totally. I like. Yeah. And that bomber jacket, oh man, the, the amount of like 
my brain really was pushed with that pattern because <laughs> there's elements of patterns that you just don't think about until you're trying to construct it. Totally. And you're just like, why won't this go together? And I mean, I just, I put so much time into trying to make it a pattern that was going to work, but also a pattern that was fun to sew because yeah. it was a sew along. So it needed to be something that could be taught. And there were so many elements in that, like Hong Kong seam finishes, yes. which I had never done. So then I was like, researching how do you do Hong Kong finishes, you know? So yeah. it's, it was just lots of fun little elements that all came together in a pattern that's not only fun to sew, but it's pretty fun to teach as well. So uh -huh. totally, yeah, it's so much fun working with you guys. And, and it is interesting to see the progression from like when we first started, which Ma yeah. Amanda, I don't know if you remember. So when uh, years ago, probably five years ago, maybe you had reached out to ask if you, if I would be, you know, answer some questions and be in an issue mm -hmm. of the magazine. And so I did it and it was just like, oh my God, I have made it. I am in a magazine. <laughs> I, have pic I have pictures of myself in Barnes and Noble holding the magazine oh. up. I was like this, I have made it my, I am as far as I'm going to go, I'm in a magazine. So I was very excited. And then probably two or three months later, I get an email from you and you said, um, you said just, you know, reaching out to see if you'd be interested in contributing some proposals for future projects. And I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> literally freaking out. So I respond and then you emailed back. You're like, oh my gosh, I emailed the wrong Kimberly. <gasps> and it, really? And because what? it was embroidery. Not that you didn't want to email me, but it it was for the embroidery magazine and not the, so then I was like, oh, it's okay. You're like, do you know how to do embroidery? And I was like, no, but that's okay. No worries. And then I got included on the next call out for patterns. And I remember thinking like, I don't even care if she didn't mean to email me. <laughs> oh, that is, I love that story. That's so funny. And um, I mean, look where we are now. Like had that not little, like had that email not accidentally come to me. Yeah. Like who, we probably wouldn't be we, yeah. in this relationship now and so mm -hmm. it's okay that you didn't mean to email me <laughs> we didn't have the other kimberly <laughs> whoever i don't know who it was whoever <laughs> that other kimberly was that was not me thank you that is so funny yes it's glad to know that my my email woes are consistent with yeah. myself five years ago because i still unfortunately do that kind of stuff <laughs> Well, well it so all worked we, out. It did. It did. <laughs> we actually meant for that other Kimberly to be on the podcast today. Sorry. <laughs> that is really awkward. You are not the Kimberly we thought would log in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like there's tears like coming from my eyes. Yeah. Uh, I uh, today I actually I was seeing I was sewed um, the oyster wrap blouse live on YouTube yeah. Live today. I'll show you just quickly. It's like in this daisy print. There'll be pictures on the show notes, but look at how it turned out. Oh, With yeah. the wrap front. Oh my gosh. I, love I knew it, it was going to be good in that fabric, Meg, and it is. So, I know. So it's good. so cute, but I love, yeah. I love the elasticated hems and like the. the of that pattern. So yeah, I need to fun. make some matching bottoms now too. <laughs> There's so many of the patterns that I have made for you guys that like, you know, I've got all the pre samples in my closet because I needed to sew it for myself first right. before yeah. I, you know, finished up the pattern and all, all of, I've got stacks of samples that I would have sent to you guys for the magazine over the years. And I constantly be like, oh, I forgot about that pattern and like pull it out and wear it that day. And yeah, so it's always fun to have my patterns, but then also all of the stuff that I've done with you guys over the years. Uh -huh. And you also, speaking of like pattern, if people want to do this for themselves, you do have an online course that you teach people how to create like digital patterns, correct? 
Yeah. So what my course, so when I started, I took the pattern workshop course, uh, yeah. Lauren Dahl. Uh, That's such a great course. It, it is a really fantastic course. And, you know, I took that and then I realized a couple of years into my business when I wanted to make paper patterns that there was no guidance for how to even go about taking your PDF pattern business and creating paper patterns. Paper, right. Yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, there's a different market for paper patterns than there is for PDF. So there's Mm -hmm. this whole other group of sewists that you may never capture because they aren't involved in the PDF market. And so I sort of spent a bunch of time researching, figuring out how I was going to do it. And then I decided to create this course Mm -hmm. where it basically walks people through the different options for, you know, transitioning their business to also include paper patterns. And so it's a pretty specific course, you know, you've Mm -hmm. basically already have PDF patterns and you're wanting to offer paper patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't really, the learning how to make patterns was done already right. with this amazing course. So the good so like, this is, next step for sure. Exactly. And originally oh. it was going to be a part of pattern workshop as another course. Um, but then we just decided to have them be separate. Um, and so it really is like a next step. If you've decided now you would like to be available in brick and mortar shops, then here's a great resource for how to do that. Wow. Okay, so, so cool. going on to something else, you, so you you make patterns for your own line, you make patterns for other people's line, you you have an online course, and then you also have this maker's retreat. If if the others weren't enough, yeah, exactly. Tell, tell us a little bit about that, and like, what's the best thing about the maker's retreat? So um, the maker's retreat really started because I there's something to be said about spending time with other people who are makers and not just sewists. Like I love hanging out with sewists, but I love hanging out with other people that are creative. And Mm -hmm. I have so many interests outside of sewing that I was like, what if I just get a group of people together and we hang out for like four days and we eat good food and we make things. And like, that's sort of how it started. And then it like snowballed. I tend to go all in on things. (laughs) My engineer husband is the one that's behind me going, have you thought about how you're going to pay for this? And I'm like, well, no, because that's not the fun part. I have thought about all the things we're going to make, and then I'm going to figure out how to pay for all of this. So it sort of just started as I want to do this. I'm sure others will want to do it with me. So let's hang out. So that's sort of where it all started. And I had no idea if anybody was going to sign up. It was incredibly stressful (laughs) because I had (laughs) signed again. I jumped jumped in and hoped for the best. And I had signed a contract with this hotel, paid a huge deposit. And then I was like, what if nobody signs up? So it was sort of like, and then it happened. The first one happened in November of 2019. And it was so much more fun than I could have ever imagined. And, you know, I made friends through there that you know, like they've now come back again for another retreat that I just had this last November. And it's like everybody, when you're a maker, you like to be around other makers. And the thing with friendships within like the making or sewing community is that we don't start at like the bottom level. When you meet another maker, you, your friendship starts like three steps up. Because so we true. can just yeah. skip, we can skip all the basics and we can just be like, so I like to sew. And they're like, I like to sew too. And now <laughs> we're friends. And, and you can and talk about so many, so much yes. common ground to start your friendship up. Exactly. Totally. So yeah. it's not that same like awkward, like you're walking into a room and you don't know these people and you don't even know if you have anything in common. And so it was like, 
We became friends from the moment people walked in the door. And we, and I got to try so many different things and share my, you know, my interests with all of them. And I loved that it was really like low pressure. So they all came to have fun, to hang out, to eat good food. They didn't expect it to be this like super formal like, yeah. event. It was really like they were getting, well, my life, like a little chaotic and a little like, <laughs> you know, prepared, but like. At one point, it's like, I don't have any rubber bands. I need rubber bands for, you know, for the indigo dyeing. And I'm like, why didn't I bring rubber bands? And everybody's like, that's okay. Like, it just was sort of, it's just so relaxed that I love it. And I look forward, like COVID, I had to cancel yeah. the 2021, yeah. which was, it's a, it's it's stressful. And you guys it are is, yeah. having a retreat. So, you know, like mm -hmm. people are entrusting a lot of money yep. to you and, yep. yeah. and juggling like what is going to work and what isn't going to work. And, you know, I had to email all of these people that had given me a lot of money and say, I'm going to have to cancel, but because I was going to lose thousands of dollars yeah. on this deposit. Um, if like it just, you know, you pay out money yeah. and you collect money, but you've already started spending money. So if you have mm -hmm. to cancel, so I was honest, I was like, I'm a person here. So I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to lose money if I refund all of you. So I was like, does anybody want to postpone? <laughs> Can I hold your money until the following year? And almost every single person. Oh, that's said, amazing. That's Just amazing. Hold it. We'll see you in 2021. And so it was like, that was the moment that I knew that these people genuinely cared about me and my business yeah. and the situation that we were in. And they knew that I was only canceling because I had to, yeah. And, yeah. you know, like that's when you sort of feel like I've created this community of these people that are, you know, like-minded and we're all like, we're just trying to share yeah. an activity that we love. And they didn't want to put me in any hardships. And I also didn't want them. If they needed the money, I was going to get it for exactly. them. But it was like, yeah. I had to be super vulnerable in that moment and be totally honest and just say like, I'm going to like have to borrow money from our family like I try to keep everything separate, business yeah. and family. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I was like, so I'm going to be like taking money out of savings to pay people back if that's what it comes to. And so they they just all rallied behind me and they're like, we'll see you in 2021. So it's, Yay. it's amazing. And that's like awesome. these people are my friends. Like they may have started as somebody who signed up to come make with me. And now these are my friends and I yeah. convince them every year to come back, you know, like <laughs> is they're there all one in 2022. I'm like, I want to go. <laughs> there <laughs> is. And it's going to be in Seattle. It's in October. <gasps> oh, cool. um, it's just South of the airport so that we don't spend as much time traveling. So it's going to be like, you know, it's a half an hour from the airport, but it's, you wouldn't know it based on where it is. And it's like overlooking the water. And I mean, it's, it's so much fun. So yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, wow. I love that. I feel like one, I mean, I feel like your experience so far has been a testament to your starting place that you really built this event out of like things that you wanted to do and you were passionate about and like a really genuine yeah. place and that people have responded, responded to that, um, makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. to whenever you do your retreats and post pictures, I have like terrible FOMO because <laughs> you can tell y'all are having so much fun. You know, and you're not alone. Like I get people that are like, oh my gosh, why didn't I Ugh, come? And, I and it's hard because, you know, it's also a lot of money and not yeah, everybody yeah. is in a position that can, can afford that. And, you know, that's why I try to offer payment plans so that 
people can spread it out over like six or eight months. And I'm like, it's also a business. So I mm-hmm. chatted with people at this last one and I said, you know, I love doing these, but I really need to charge more. <laughs> and yeah. that's a hard yeah. conversation to have yeah. with people because you you can only do it so long, not really making money. It's, then it's all yeah. sustainable. Yeah. And then it's, you're going to, you know, yeah, you need to be yeah. honest, take risks and you need to, Yeah make it sustainable. For, yeah. For but it's also work. hard because you know, it's yeah. a lot of money. It's, oh, you know, sure. like 100%. it's a lot of money. Yeah. And so then I spend the whole, like I spent this whole last retreat making sure people felt like they got their money's worth. And they all just kept saying like, just have fun. We're good. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> Did we do enough? Do I need more food? Like, you know, so it's, it's a hard place to be because you just want yeah. to be there and you just want to hang out. But you also yeah. recognize that people have spent a lot of money to be there. And so you want them to get value. It's a funny mm-hmm. to be the person in charge. You're thinking about things nobody else is thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I feel like we've learned so much just putting together the plan for our socation. Like it is, mm-hmm. it's just a really different business. It's a really different yeah thing that you're delivering to people than a sewing pattern download or exactly. a sewing magazine. You know, it's a or really a, different. A co- yeah, of course. It's like or it's an online a, course. A, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, but I feel like people are wanting them. And so if if you are even thinking about getting into the sewing business, I like this could be some if you know, if you feel like you don't exactly have those expertise and, you know, grit and all that stuff, like this could be something that if someone's listening and wanting to get into a sewing business, a retreat or, you know, that's something that could be possible yeah. if you, yeah. I Good agree because point. you're going to be interacting with people that are also in the sewing community. You know, one yeah. of the people that came to my first retreat is uh, Katie of Modern Textiles and she is a big quilter. So she like mm. has a huge, like long arm. And so there's, multiple people from the first retreat that have since started working with her to get their quilts quilted. So right. It's a, it's also is, a networking event. For it sure. is, for but sure. you're doing yeah. it like in a super yeah, organic, a yeah. natural way. And it's not like, here's my business card. Oh, yeah. It's just like, <laughs> just you're hanging out. And then through that, it's like, oh, you do this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. I've got something for you. Or, you know, it's, it's, so if you're wanting to sort of get into the sewing community, Retreats are a great way to do it because yeah, you just, just get to attending. interact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just go to a retreat and you're going to be interacting with amazing people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think we can all answer this question too. Just like one thing you wish you knew before you started uh, either a sewing business or getting into the business like of so I feel like in all some uh, of a realm, like we all, you know, um, make money off of off of sewing. Is there something that you wish like you, you just knew before you started and made the the decision to, to do that? I don't know. So I had no idea what I was doing when I started my (laughs) business. Like literally I had no idea what I was doing. I started my business. Um, my kids were like two and four maybe. And I was tired of my life revolving completely around my children, my house and my husband because I was a stay at home mom. And so I was like, I like sewing. I'll make sewing patterns. And that's really like, honestly, how it went. And then I emailed Lauren Mm. and I said, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Would I be able to take your course? Like, am I actually going to be able to do it? And she was like, oh, yeah, get this book. You'll be fine. (laughs) And like four months later, I released my first pattern. And like, that's just so for me, if I know enough, I probably won't do it. Like my personality is to to literally like jump in and hope it works out and figure it out while I go. because like. With my, like, I talk about this on social media, like with my anxiety and depression, like the more I know, the more overwhelmed I get. And then I literally won't do it. So because I had no idea what I was doing, 
I was like, well, obviously I can do this. Like, Mm -hmm. obviously. And then I just did it. So for me, I think that's my strength slash weakness. Like I've got my husband to keep me grounded when I'm a bit over the top, but like (laughs) for the most part, it's almost better. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) So it's such an interesting perspective. I, yeah. I feel like that has come up on the podcast before. Cause I feel like when I started sewing, I was like picking all these crazy fabrics and they were all just like horrible to work with. And they were things that now that I know how hard they were to work with, like I, I totally steer clear and I'm less like brave and bold about pattern selection than I was before I knew better. And I don't know, there was kind of like a freedom in just kind of jumping in headlong and, um, and figuring it out. I love that. I think for me, the the thing that um, I wish I knew earlier on in the process, and I think it relates to so many things, particularly the podcast, just like the the kind of perfection culture in sewing is just unattainable and unsustainable in so many aspects of what we do. So I feel like I was really focused on that early on whenever, when I, we did like my very first video project, when I did our very first podcast recording, you know, Mm. I really, you know, I feel like I was so focused on perfection, but we're people and like part of, you know, this podcast, part of the video, like it's knowing that we're human and we're all human and I'm on this side trying to make it work and you're on that side trying to follow along with how I'm explaining this so along and like yeah we get there together and I don't know I feel like I I've relaxed so much um when it comes to that maybe too much (laughs) 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 yeah I think I think so I started out in the theater, you know, my, uh-huh. my, I, I did the, I did sewing as a business or as a, you know, as a living before I yeah. ever did it as a hobby. It, it really wasn't a hobby for me. It was just what I did. Um, but I think that that whole perfection thing was, um, it was really important for me to embrace because my, the person who taught me was very, very big on perfection um, I think I've mentioned before he wanted me to sew on the lines. You would you would draw your your uh, where your seam should be on your on your fabric, and then you were supposed to sew exactly on that line. And once I got into the actual professional theater, um, my shop manager was like, "Yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect. The people, the closest people mm-hmm. who are seeing it are fifteen feet away. They're not going to be able to see <sighs> something being slightly wrong." And that that after that, I was a lot more comfortable with what I was doing because you, because I realized it really didn't matter that much. And it kind of eventually trans, translated over as I started doing sewing as a hobby later after I left that job that, you know, if somebody notices that my hem is a little wonky, why are they looking at my hem so closely? That's weird. That's not my problem. That's their mm-hmm. problem. So, um, (laughs) right. So, uh, yeah. So learning, learning that perfection is not necessary has always been a big part of my Uh knowing and remembering. Yeah. Uh I actually tell a lot of my students that like I give them permission to let it all go. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you need somebody to tell you that it really doesn't matter, then I'm going to be that person. So nobody is going to, I told a student just the other day, nobody's going to walk up to you and be like, um, did you know you sewed that at half an inch instead of three eighths (laughs) of an inch? Like nobody cares. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. And so there's really no reason for you to be so like rigid about it. Like have fun. I'm like, it's close enough. Like that's, you know, going to work. It should. So I think Mm -hmm. that people, it's almost like people need that permission to just not focus on being perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Because you are never going to achieve it. And if that is the only thing that you can focus on, you are going to end up feeling bad about yourself. And yeah. we don't want to speak for yourself. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just totally okay. joking. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm... Nobody can be perfect except for Meg. No, um, I'm totally do... joking. <laughs> no, you're joking. So am I joking. <laughs> I know you're not perfect. Come on. I've known no, you for I... years. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You should see my sewing lives are, are funny. I like put a time limit on uh, my live today. I was like, and I oh, ended up pretty much sewing it in an hour and a half, like with two set in sleeves with like ease That's tapping amazing. and like, every, it was so funny. I was just like, why did I do that to myself? I never even started this live with, all right, Meg has one hour and 30 minutes to sew a woven blouse. And, and then, but I almost did it. So I didn't quite do it. But then I was like apologizing after I, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't quite get the elastic all the way through it time's up <laughs> so funny oh for me just I feel like I just wish I knew more about like how much writing goes into like having a sewing that's like I have never writing and like has never been my like strong suit and like I didn't you know, I didn't go to, I didn't get a degree where you had to like do like English classes. I went to fashion school, like right out of high school. And, and so I feel like that's just one thing I wish I knew more about to articulate things that I need to talk about my sewing. Uh, so thankfully I have like lovely editors, like Nate, John, <laughs> Kate, to, <laughs> to proof all my writing. But that's just something I wish I knew more, yeah. like that just all the things that surround just sewing to, you know, make, you know, money successfully out, out of sewing. So, yeah. But yeah. Instructional writing in particular, yeah. so hard. I know. Like, so hard. And I feel like I have, yeah, I've, I've definitely come a long way in that regard, but I think when you first start like down that road, it is just a different way of communicating and a different different considerations you're giving to your audience and yeah. what they know mm -hmm. and what they need to know. And, oh, that's, well, it's a challenge. And, and it makes sense in your head. So this is a big totally. thing that I come up with is I will send it to testers <sighs> totally. and they will be like, I have no idea, no idea. what yeah. you are telling me to do. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but come on. I mean, I'm telling you to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, that is not what the instructions say. <laughs> so it's, it's this like, like you said, Amanda, it's sort of like you have to consider who you are sharing this information with and act like they don't have any of this like background knowledge that you have exactly. and finding a way to write the instructions. I completely agree, Meg, like the written instructions are like a whole other level of like brain teasing. Like my, I get tired. I have to take breaks because yeah, I'm yeah. thinking in ways that I'm like, okay, just, just do this. Like, why do I have to write three sentences about mm -hmm. it? Just do it, you know, but I have to, I have to mm -hmm. lay it out there. Very uh -huh. specific. Uh -huh. All right. I feel like we could just talk about this like for so, so, so long, yes. but just one little quick wrap up question. Because again, we like to pick favorites. Uh, what is your favorite pattern that you made for Sew News? One. <laughs> it was really hard, but I looked back through all of the patterns <gasps> and I decided that my favorite is probably the Penrose blouse. <gasps> like I love the square Me neck Me and I love the gathering. It like it's another one of those shirts that like you could just wear instead of a t-shirt and feel yep. like you're a little more put together for the totally. day, but it's not like over the top. So I wear my white one, which was like a, a sample for myself that I sewed when I created the pattern. And I was like, yeah, I really like this one. So that's mm -hmm. probably my favorite. I will say though the Pagosa pants are like the most yes, the versatile, yes. the OG. <laughs> like I'm constantly like, oh well, I will use that as a base and then yeah. go make mm -hmm. something else with it. So I know you said one, but I pick two. It's yeah. okay. Those are those would be my two as well. <laughs> you know, I have to share some insider info. That was the Penrose was I think our most popular so along ever. Yeah, just it was ever. Yay. So your yeah. instincts and your love for that pattern must have come through. I feel like, I don't know if you were intending us to answer this question, Meg, 
Um, but I'm going to chime in with my yeah. favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but because I have so many. And it's usually like the current one because I'm always like about to film a sew along or just finished filming a sew along. Um, I think the Wyndham bomber jacket is up there because I was so surprised by how how much I love it and how how it just came together so well. Even with all those techniques built in, it was probably the most intense sew along that I've prepped. And it I don't know, it, it came out it came out so well, I think, on the the pattern side and the sew along side. And Ginger, who works on the back end with sewing video, she's like made three of them already. So <laughs> I feel like that is like so it makes me so happy. And all of hers are amazing. She made like a satin one and it is incredible. Um, so but cute. I, I think, like I said, um, the most recent one is always my favorite. And we just finished filming the knit cami, uh, so along oh, for the summer issue of so news. It's so good. It is so good. I love it so much. And it was one of those things, like sometimes when you're filming and sewing on camera, like it doesn't like something goes off and then it throws something else off and it's not, it's okay for camera, but you know, like there are things that you would have done differently and it came together so perfectly and so crisp and so clean. And I love it so much. And I want to hack it like a bazillion different ways. It's so, so good. It's so, it's so good. good. And I, that was a totally like, Hey, I need this in my wardrobe. So <laughs> you think you could design something for it? <laughs> well, because if you remember, we had gone back and forth about yeah. much more involved patterns. And then yeah. you were like, what do you think about just a cami? And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> need a cami in my wardrobe too. Yeah. So yeah. it's amazing how it was like, we were shooting for the moon and then we were like, actually, could we just like, do yes, Meg's holding <laughs> yeah, on I'm, one right now. It's, it's so like good, a white, you guys. A basic white cami. It's amazing. I'm so excited for people to be able to get this pattern because it yep. really did turn out amazing. Yeah, I like the Pagosa pants. Yeah, keep that's my <laughs> Sorry, I hadn't gotten to chime in yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Penrose. I love the Penrose. I made it I into a dress. The pen yet. Penrose yet? I keep oh. meaning to, and I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh. It's so, so until I do, Pagosa pants. Yeah, I've never actually sewn the Pagosa pants as Pagosa pants. I've turned them into a jumpsuit. I've like hacked them different. I've never just sewn them straight. So that's <laughs> on my to do it. Like, um, for sure. So many oh. good ones. Well, that was so fun. All right. We are back and it is time for our Sojo segment, which is our favorite segment where we get to talk about what's giving us our sewing inspiration. So let's see. Um, I'm going to put someone on the spot. Amanda, what's your Sojo? Um, I am. I'm still in my I think I talked about last week or uh, last episode. I'm in. Uh, seasonally inappropriate sewing project mode. So I'm making a bunch of Ogden camis <laughs> in addition to knit camis. But we ha I have a, um, a skate event coming up and it's the first one that's like disco themed. So oh. Oh. I'm going to make a disco outfit. And then when I started to think about this, I'm going to make a, um, a Sally jumpsuit by Closet Core because it's knit. It'll be easy Ooh. to skate in. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, but I want to hack that with this other fabric that I have. So it just turned into this like disco capsule. And they're, they're probably, it's going to be very wearable <laughs> disco capsule, but um, very surprising. Like I just, I was like, I kind of want some like flashy skate outfits and I'm, I'm not a flashy person. So this was, this was new for me. So I'm going disco. It's my sojo. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. How about you, Meg? What's your sojo? Mine's also a disco capsule, but for socation. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm just going to go full disco. We're having Please the do. disco ball arrive, right? Didn't Amanda? Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm doing a, I am doing a capsule wardrobe for socation. So like that blouse, the, the oyster wrap blouse I make, I'm going to make a matching skirt. And then I want to make like a lime green suit. So those can all like mix and match. And then, so I'm just what? working on, 
items like mix and match travel items because I feel like my suitcase is going to be so full yes with so much stuff because I'm going to be there I'm going to be staying in Colorado and like filming a course after and just like you should have seen like I went home um no I went to Toronto uh I still it's still weird I still call Toronto home I went to Toronto for the weekend and my friend she's like how long are you staying? And I, just go, I, was, I have looks for every night. Okay. <laughs> I had a full suitcase for two nights. So need to minimize my luggage and think about a smart, cool, fun capsule. So that's what I'm, that's my Sojo. Nice. nice. <laughs> How about you, Kimberly? What's giving you your Sojo? Well, I am in the middle of getting a pattern ready, my first pattern in a couple of years. And so I'm just sewing. It's a jumpsuit that I like sewed for myself like almost two years ago. And now I'm finally making it into a pattern. And I'm so excited. And so it's a lit, like, obviously it's work slash I really want to wear it. So I'm sewing samples and like, you know, perfecting the steps, but let me know if you need a tester. Uh Oh my gosh. (laughs) It's it's so good. I'm very excited about it. So it's, you know, it's fun. Like, yes, it's work, but it, I get the fruits of all that, you know, like I've got to make a bunch of samples anyways. So um, yeah, right now I'm making one out of like the slub. What is that slub linen? Like everyone mm-hmm. seemed to carry it. I had like three yards I found and I was like, this is perfect. And it's dark blue. And mm. oh, I'm just, I'm excited to wear it. I wanted to try to get it done so I could wear it for you guys today, but I did not get it. done. <laughs> <laughs> Quite all right. Now was this one, did you make this before? one of your retreats and do like diet was I it did why did indigo cuz i remember this pa- this it's indigo jumpsuit. and then i made one that was sleeveless in like a brown linen uh-huh. um, <clears throat> and so yeah i've been like i had planned to have this be the pattern at my 2020 retreat and then that yeah. didn't happen yeah. and then i was i just never made it a pattern yeah. so now it's going to be a pattern. And so I'm working on that. That's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kate? What's giving you your Sojo? Well, I am, um, I'm still kind of loving this whole zero waste thing. And, (gasps) um, and after, (laughs) after this whole conversation we had last time, um, about the fashions and whatnot, I went and dug out a piece of fabric that I have. It's a one yard remnant of, um, gold sequin fabric with, um, like the super long fringe as the finish on one end. And I'm like, yeah, there's only a yard of this. I think I would need two to do a zero waste dress, but, um, maybe if I find a good coupon, I could get another yard of this. And then, so I'm just kind of toying with the idea and sort of, you know, just kind of letting it percolate. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. I don't know where I would ever wear a sequin dress, but one can always location. <laughs> Is that going to be too much? No, <laughs> um, absolutely not. Okay, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I am disappointed that your sojo was not ice dyeing something to match your hair because I feel like <laughs> that has to happen. <laughs> Like, I agree. Okay, let it go. <laughs> my, my okay, my sojo is now changed. My sojo okay, is now. I'm saying something to match thank my you. hair. <laughs> now I need to do some thank research so and figure out how to ice dye things because it's been a oh, while. It's since so I've easy. That. It's so easy. Ice and dye, and then it melts, it. and then the yep. fabric is dyed. It's amazing. Hmm. Yep. All right. I haven't dyed either. Recommend. Maybe I want to try that too. You yeah, it's a slippery it. slope. You're going to yeah. just start dying <laughs> everything. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I love it. I'm like a terrible dyer. Like if I need to get something all one color, all even, like I am just not great. I'm not gifted in that way. But so ice dyeing is perfect for me because it's like not supposed to be perfect. Like the mm-hmm. more imperfect, the better. I love ice dyeing. Same with indigo dyeing. It doesn't yeah. have to, it's like, doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of just, Ugh. 
It is. It is what it turns out to be. And it's amazing. And that's the magic. I love yep. dyeing fabric. Oh. oh my gosh. I'm really good at the dyeing fabric where I spill red wine all over what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Wine, <laughs> that's creating. called wine dyeing. <laughs> wine <laughs> dyeing. <laughs> Splash it on yourself. Oh. I coffee dye a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm really good yeah. at coffee dying. Yay, Taco earth tones. dying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the food dying. Oh my gosh. New new class at Makers Retreats. <laughs> Everybody, dying we're eating something dinner. sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Put geez. on your white garment. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Kimberly, it has been amazing to have you on today and just a super long time coming. I'm not sure why we waited so long. I know. But it is, you are such a lovely person and such a talented designer. And I am just, um, we're so lucky to get to work with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. Well, thank Love you. It. And thank you, Amanda, for accidentally emailing me <laughs> all those years ago. <laughs> That's because terrible, but I'm going to be I okay should, with it. I'm going to find the email. I'm going to, I'm going to find oh, the email no. and send it to you. It was, um, it was awesome. But we'll I'm glad it in the happened. show notes. No, I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm so glad I made um, a silly email mistake five years ago and that we are where we are. It's awesome. Yes. It's yes. so fun to work with you guys. So like I always say, just keep the projects coming. All right. Because Ooh. I will always find time to make projects with you guys because it's so much fun to work with you. That is awesome. Yes, right. well, that is awesome. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun and I hope to be able to come to a, a sewing retreat with you guys yes. maybe yes. in 2023 Yeah, so I yes. can see you all in person. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. We'll have that to make it happen. That would be so great. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, that was such a great conversation. Kimberly's so sweet. Yes. I know. That made She's me just so love lovely. her. I know I like, I, I've never talked to her in person, just over email working with her. Like it just, I didn't, I didn't know like how she just, she just jumps into things. It just made me love her even more. And just, I know. Uh, she's so amazing. Totally. She All is. right. Speaking of jumping good, good into person. things, let's jump yes. in to our so and tell question for this episode. So this week we're going to ask, what is your favorite pattern hack? And Amanda, I'm sh well, actually, you know what? I'm not sure you have a favorite. So Meg, I'm going to ask you first and let Amanda take a little time to think. <laughs> My favorite pattern hack to do is just to eliminate any sort of dart. I will turn mm. it into a seam line. I will just clip and make it a pleat or I, I, that's what I like to do because I hate sewing darts. Um, and I even hate wearing, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. There's certain, obviously you can't always avoid them, but I just, I always, Julian always jokes. Sometimes he hears me and he'll just be like, oh, pleat the dart. And like, he overheard <laughs> me like showing a video and it's like, he goes like, what does that mean? I'm like, yeah. So pleating the dart. It's my favorite pattern hack. Great. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? <sighs> yeah. I still can't pick a favorite. I have so <laughs> many and I feel like I, I was thinking about this more from like a project, not like a thing that I like to do regularly. And I think, um, but I, I do, I like a good sleeve swap. I did that Ooh, recently on my I master blouse that. where I added the Roscoe sleeve because it just, it changes up the proportions and the silhouette so much um, to change up the sleeve. But I don't know. I think my my all time favorite pattern hack that I've done um, was probably the boiler suit that I made. Mm. Um, it was let's see, it was April twenty twenty, and I did I mashed up a button up shirt with an overalls pattern and made a boiler suit, and it was very involved. And it was definitely one of those where I was having to make decisions like as I went because things weren't working out and then eventually things worked out and I'm probably most proud of, of that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. As for me, um, I, mine is, mine's actually a fit thing. I have, for, for me, it's really important to, uh, double check the size of the sleeves cause I have kind of uh, chubby upper arms. So if I'm not careful, 
my sleeves are too tight and then that makes mm. the pattern basically unwearable. So, um, so yeah, a full bicep adjustment is very important for me. Um, okay. I also tend to, I also tend to take almost every pattern I have and blend because I have a small, smaller bust than usually coordinates with my hips. So I, so I uh-huh. do a lot of blending between bust and hip, uh, nothing fancy, just, uh, just stuff that makes it fit more comfortably. Nice. That's a good one. That's a, such a good I one. I thought you were going to say, just add, I add, add fringe to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, this needs to be my new hack, but. <laughs> fringe it. Fringe I know. That's it. like Kate's version of put a bird on it. It's just put some fringe on it. <laughs> put fringe on it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, lovely, that was fun. lovely episode. I'm as all always. Now. I know. I'm tired too. I'm I think exhausted. it's from smiling yeah. so much and I laughing know, I'm, with y'all. My cheeks are hurting from laughing because I did the sewing live earlier and I just apparently just <laughs> laugh at my own jokes <laughs> uh, <laughs> like on here and on there. And, and, just, and obviously we are all just have such fun time together and I can't yes, wait to laugh with you guys in person. I know. We're going to have so many soon. giggles. We are. Yeah. So Indeed. many giggles. Mm-hmm. All right. Do we have any like last minute an- announcements that we need to make or mm-hmm. can we call this thing done? I think we're done. Let's be done. done. All right. See awesome. if we can. Yeah. 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 Thanks everyone for listening. <laughs> and until next time, happy stitching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I did it. You did it. I got in after you, Meg. <laughs> For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the Sew and Tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a Sew Daily podcast and produced by Golden Peak Media. It's hosted and produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Daisha Clay is our producer. Director of podcasts is Jared Mayer. Tiffany Warble is director of content. Kelsey Ratterman handles our marketing. And Andrea Lotz does all things digital. If you'd like more information on sponsoring or advertising on So and Tell, go to goldenpeakmedia.com. <laughs>